All right, so for those of you who don't know, Judge Kavanaugh was appointed by Donald Trump to the Supreme Court. Now, for him to officially become a Supreme Court justice, he has to become confirmed by the Senate. And the Senate holds these public as well as private hearings with the the, the appointee. And then they vote on if this person's a Supreme Court justice or not. And to me, the the when a president has the chance to appoint a Supreme Court justice, this is by far the most long-term influential ability that they have. It's a very lasting move that they make because Supreme Court justices are not able to be termed out. They are justices for life. They literally serve on the bench until they die and or decide to step down. Well, I guess it's not and or. It's probably just or. Because if you die, it's not really like a conscious decision to step down, right? All right. Quick aside, by the way, the fucking Jets lost again. And I'm a Jets fan. But fuck, man. It's frustrating. Darnold, I'm not sold on. I know it's only been four games. He was supposedly, you know, I don't follow it that closely. Sports in general. Um, so, uh, but he was supposedly, you know, a great quarterback in college. He was uh, like a top two, three draft pick this year. The Jets got him. They need a, a good quarterback. A franchise quarterback that they can build a team around. And he just, I don't know, it's only been four games. His appeal is supposedly like a very, like a long-term play. That's what made me, you know, the whole Supreme Court justice thing made me think about that in relation to football, like a long-term play. And hopefully that's the case and he progresses and gets better. But I don't know, like the certain tells that I saw with him, like in this game specifically uh, against the Jags, which was like just not commanding, not having command over the offense, like not having that, like the team doesn't seem to like look to him as a leader yet. Maybe that's something that will develop over time or should, um, but he kind of has like that Mark Sanchez feel right now where like they don't they don't like respect him as a quarterback yet or as like the leader of the the offense kind of like how they treated uh Willie Beeman in the beginning in any any given Sunday they like they didn't want to play for him type of thing but not as egregious obviously anyway all right <laughs> I'm going to the to the game against the Vikings on October 21st and very much so looking forward to it it's in a few weeks. I'll definitely, uh, you know, podcast about that when the time comes. It's a, a bunch of us, like 15 to 20 people, go to one game a year and, you know, make this, like, big event out of it, tailgate for, like, four to five hours before the game. And, you know, it's beer and beer funnels and liquor and, and burgers and hot dogs and grilling and shish kebabs and a bunch of food and chips and just, like, really good time. And then the game, you know, so it's like the cherry on top. And then afterwards, tail, tailgate again. But I digress. Hopefully, that's a better game than this one that I just saw. All right. So anyway, back to the whole Brett Kavanaugh thing. The Senate, unsurprisingly so, is going extra hard uh, 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 on the Democratic side because of two things. One, they were going to go hard regardless because... Barack Obama had the opportunity to appoint a Supreme Court justice before he was termed out of office, and the Republicans pulled this like shenanigans out of their ass and decided not to have Senate hearings to confirm him and just wait till he gets termed out and then allow the next president, which is now Trump, to appoint a Supreme Court justice. So because of that, the you know, like the Senate Republicans kind of held that process hostage, which is bullshit. The Democrats were kind of sort of going to give them a hard time in the same kind of way, but also probably not for like a line in the sand, not in a line in the sand type of way, the way the Republicans did, because, you know, the whole when they go low, we go high mentality of the Democrats, which is oftentimes bullshit. Well, maybe not oftentimes, because I get the sentiment behind it, you know, don't stoop to their level type of thing, but sometimes you just got to go in the trenches and 
say fuck it balls to the wall we'll have nine justices in like four years i'm exaggerating but anyway (laughs) secondly kavanaugh is accused of aggravated sexual misconduct now here's how i feel about what's going on with that kavanaugh has been accused by dr christine blazy ford which also testified in front of the senate and I believe there were two other occurrences, but don't take my word for it. You know, look that up yourself. I think there were two other occurrences, but Dr. Christine Blasey Ford is the only one that like testified before uh, the Senate. And it's regarding the occurrence that happened back in high school. Now, mind you, Brett Kavanaugh is 53 years old. If it happened back in high school or early college, the alleged incident took place over three decades ago. Now, I'm not of the of the school of thought that leans towards the why did you wait 30 years to say something or why did you wait till, you know, he's running for Senate to say something because different people have different tolerances for different things, different levels of tolerance. Some people could take things to the grave. Some people can hold things in for 90 years, some for 90 seconds. Like, who knows? That's a, a personal gumption type of thing. Also, maybe someone that chose to hold on to something and take it to the grave decided not to because of the unforeseen extraordinary circumstances of the person that violated them was just about to be nominated and about to be confirmed to one of the strongest positions in the country and will have the ability to influence to a very direct degree long-term impacting laws like the federal stance on abortion or if same-sex couples are allowed to be married and about another 100 cases per year that are of up the of the utmost conflict between individuals and the federal government and state governments that can potentially set precedents to the way things unfold for decades and decades into the future So that might be something motivating to make someone speak up about something after 30 years. So again, I'm not taking the route of why do you take so long to say something if it's true? Because the fact of the matter is we don't know if it's true. We don't know if it's bullshit. We don't know if it's a calculated decision to try to bring someone down. We don't know if things happened the way that Dr. Christine Blasey Ford alleges or if they didn't happen the way that Judge Brett Kavanaugh alleges. I will say that if it did happen, he's an absolute piece of shit. And even though it happened so many years ago, there's no, like, from a legal standpoint, I don't think there's a statute of limitations on that. And even if there were, or if there is, or if there was, from a moral standpoint, there's no statute of limitations on it. It's like, there's certain fuck-ups that one can make where you change your trajectory of your life, period. You know what I mean? It's like, I know it's kind of like a hardline approach to the situation, but with things like that, I kind of get black and white. It's like, if you do certain, there's certain things that you do that it's like, damn, you fucked up for life forever. Like you're done. Like on some Bill Cosby type shit. Like your comedy was still pioneering you know, Chris Rock to this day says or said that um, Bill Cosby was like the greatest that he, he ever saw work and like take the stage and would go on stage without a set, a preset set and riff for two hours straight. He was a pioneer in entertainment with shows like Fat Albert and obviously the Cosby show and A Different World and his impact on minorities and in this example uh uh, african-american minorities being able to see themselves quote-unquote portrayed in a positive light in a role model or as role models rather is very impactful artists like lena waith which are very influential this day and age and in her case specifically such a dope writer and creator and mark my words, like, destined for, like, greatness, like, like Oprah-level 
stratospheric greatness, but like in her own lane, says that if she could trace back her wanting to do what she's doing to a specific show because she used to watch a lot of like TV when she was younger and you know she never like saw herself on TV she would say um because it was a lot of like white shows or or like black people like in the hood type of shows or like black people cooning quote unquote uh said that she attributes it to a different world which is a spin-off of the Cosby show which again revolves around uh Bill Cosby but it's like all that gets undone when you rape 50 something women you know what I mean? It's like the net positive of you as a human being is like you're on the piece of shit side. So no matter the good that you do, it can absolutely be outweighed by the negative shit that you do on the balance sheet of morality. So if Kavanaugh did do this and did, did it uh, multiple times, uh, three alleged times, if I'm not mistaken, I don't think there's any more, then he falls in my eyes, on that piece of shit side, regardless of when it took place. Now, if he didn't do it, which is also as equally possible, because nobody knows what happened, that's why this whole thing is taking place, right? Except for them two, at the very least. Then it's so fucked up that someone that has, you know, busted their ass by all accounts and purposes and work their way up through uh, being a lawyer and then a judge to being appointed to the highest court in the land, which is only nine of in the country at one time. And only 113 of them in the history of the United States. Then it's equally as hard. It's horrible. And it's like, it's something that can't be undone. That's the worst part. In my opinion, it, if he didn't do it, because yeah, the damage is done to him, to his family, to his career. And if it's not true, it's like that's not something you could go back and be like, oh no, it was, we found out it was all bullshit. So, you know, that's it. He's like tainted for life. Period. He'll probably always be known as, oh, w- but wait, wasn't that that judge that like raped a girl or something like that? Oh no, he was acquitted of everything. You know, they found out that the lady was a psycho and it was all bullshit. Oh, okay. Yeah, he still looks creepy. You know what I mean? Like, he's still going to have that, like, stigma about him, regardless. Like, from this point forward, period. No matter what the outcome is now. Which is fucked up and leads me to my point of... It's actually something I heard on on, uh, the Fighter and the Kid podcast and that I completely agreed with, which is there has to be some sort of agreed-upon, iron-clad road to redemption for men that are accused of sexual misconduct and i'm not trying to mansplain or just you know be biased because i am a guy and maybe i can't check that bias to a certain degree although i think i'm being as objective as possible here but if simply being accused of something tarnishes you for life whether it be in your career or your personal relationships your aspirations Without getting to the point of validation of those claims, of those accusations. So if you're tarnished from the, from the jump, you're tarnished, you're done, you're fucked. Regardless of if it was complete fabrication, if it was bullshit, if it was true, it's like you're done regardless. You just, if it's true, if it's proven to be true, you might have illegal repercussions attached to that and so forth. But you're fucked aside from that, regardless. Like, you lose your job, your wife winds up leaving you, splitting up your family. Like, all that just comes as part of being accused. That, in and of itself, is very unfair and not a sustainable element to the fabric of how we navigate relationships as people. Because there's a large range of this stuff of these incidents, right? There's a there's a spectrum, like with most other things in life. There's a famous case from 2015 of two college kids from Occidental College in uh, Los Angeles, California, where uh, they were texting each other, they were drunk, you know, they're, you know, they're, I don't remember if they were like freshmen or sophomores or something like that. 
and you know there were college kids you know going to parties drinking um they were texting each other both both of them were drunk and uh you know saying that they want to they both want to hook up they want to you know the girl tells him does he have condoms uh he says yes they decided on a time to like meet up and hook up the girl texts her friends uh, her two girlfriends saying yeah i'm so trash or i'm gonna go get laid now um uh, this guy's so cute blah, blah 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 and long story short they wind up hooking up then the girl the next day uh is talk- hanging out with her girlfriends and her girlfriends convince her that because she was drunk she was incapable of consenting to sex even though she clearly did while albeit under the influence um as the the college uh guy was as well and the friends convinced the girl to report the guy because that's technically rape they convince her to report it to the school. The school then turns around and winds up expelling the guy from the school. Now you have incidents like that where you have two consenting drunk adults that decide to drink and fuck, being pretty much peer pressure influenced by others saying, no, no, that is can't happen. You were raped. It wasn't you wanting sex. It wasn't you initiating sex because you were drunk, so none of that stuff counts. That's like, you know, me taking a few shots, stabbing somebody in the street and saying, oh, no, no, that didn't happen because I'm drunk, so I couldn't consent to stabbing that person. Then you have cases like that on one side of the spectrum, and then cases on the other side of the spectrum with somebody like uh, uh, Harvey Weinstein or Bill Cosby. And these gross individuals deserve to be flown over to an Al Qaeda training camp and like bungee jumped in while they have their hands tie wrapped behind their backs and shirts with caricatures of Muhammad butt fucking Allah while they also wear MAGA hats. That's what they deserve. And those situations are not the same. No matter how you slice it, they're not the same. But the outcome is still the same because, again, there's no road to redemption. There's no road to clearing someone's name. The stigma stays. And uh, you're fucked in terms of your career or your school or, or your spouse's relationships comes with the accusation, not with the aftermath of the investigation of the accusations. And that's something that should be corrected. How, may you ask? Because we do do a lot of fucking complaining in this country. And it's like complaints with no answers. And I'll give a very, very, very topical suggestion. At least, you know, better than nothing. Or maybe it's worse, but who knows. I would say that these types of allegations and stuff like that should not be made public until after the fact now it's tough obviously to protect against leaks or like accusers just accusing people but certain things like people losing sponsorships or their jobs and things like that should not occur until after the investigations and like the final determination is actually made like in the case with Chris Hardwick, who was also accused by an ex-girlfriend, and Comedy Central did good by sticking by him and saying that they're going to wait and see what the outcome is of the investigation and stuff like that. They're not going to ask him to step down from his shows, etc., etc. And it turned out that his ex-girlfriend was uh, completely fabricated, like the entire thing. Like, that was the outcome of it. So maybe that type of approach, but before it hits the public, because I'm sure that, you know, slowed his like ticket sales in terms of stand of the comedy and stuff like that. So there was probably some impact, but something along those lines, but to a more official level, maybe that's a good start. And my recommendation, the whole like judge, like Brett Kavanaugh thing, this whole thing, this whole fiasco, this whole circus that we're seeing on TV and, and that's, uh, taking the bulk of the media 
attention and media output and in turn our attention is not healthy it's not good for anyone involved it's not good for judge kavanaugh and his him, him and his family it's not good for dr ford and her family it's not good for the senators which could be working on something else it's not good for the country that's just like enveloped in this and it's a a very divisive topic at that you know when we don't need any more divisive shit my advice to like that entire situation would be go to the next person in line the president has a short list of qualified judges that he were to appoint it's not just like uh kavanaugh is the only person that can do the job he has a short list of i think it was like 10 or 15 people all judges all i'm sure capable of doing the actual work of supreme court justice like this whole circus thing is not worth the negative impact that it's having when you can go with the number two guy on the list who will do just as good or better or the number two girl on the list who can do just as good or better